I mentioned in my last video where I talked about 3D printing the ear cups for my Iron Man Mark 7 helmet that I ran out of filament. And this was the spool that the filament came on. Again, it's a PLA clear, 1.75 millimeters. I had it mounted on the top of my printer this way. So the axle goes through the center of the spool like this, and I got this little buffer here that holds on to a standard bearing. And the bearing allows the spool to turn freely. So the new plastic that I picked up this weekend is red. So this is PLA again, but this one is in red. It actually is kind of a slightly orangish tint, I think. Um, it's not as dark red as my ABS that I have, but it'll do. Um, but I got a problem. So my problem is the bracket that I use to hold on is too small to hold the spool securely. So what do we do when we have a problem like that and we have a 3D printer? We print a new bracket. So I will talk about the process I go through to model this and get it ready for print and go ahead and print one. All right, so here we are on my desk and what I'm working on is attempting to replicate this, which fit pretty well here to hold my spool of filament on my printer. I wanna replicate it, but I wanna make it larger so it fits here. Really simple process. Um, not gonna go into too much detail, but basically what we want is a slightly larger diameter piece that can also hold the standard bearing. What you're gonna need for this are a pair of calipers. Um, you could use just a standard ruler, but I like to use calipers, they get pretty accurate. Um, basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure all of the dimensions of the piece that you want to replicate. Okay. Write those measurements down, notebook, piece of paper, whatever you got. And then we'll take those measurements over to a piece of software. I like to use, for stuff like this, I like to use Autodesk 123D Design. It's free. Um, works really well for doing simple shapes. This is obviously just made of a few primitives. You've got cylinder, cylinder, cut a cylinder through the middle to cut it out. Uh, inside here, it's actually kind of smooth. It's curved like a dome almost. And I think that's just so that uh, it can print the overhang easily because this section here was flat on the print bed. So inside, it, 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 there's a curve going this way. So I'll go ahead and cut to uh, Autodesk 123D Design and we'll talk about how we're gonna build that. Okay, hey, so here we are in Autodesk 123D Design. Again, it's a free piece of software. Um, please download it, check it out. It's uh, pretty useful for building dimensionally accurate parts like what we need for the uh, printer uh, filament spool bracket. I've gone ahead and built it out here. Um, I've got the piece here. It looks kind of like a wedding cake shape. It's got a hole through it for the 8mm threaded rod, hole in the bottom to hold the bearing. Uh, pretty simple to construct. It did take me a couple of a couple of times to mess with it to get it the way I wanted it, but I'll, I'll, I'll walk through briefly how I did it here. At the top, you got these menus. Um, basically, all I did was stack some cylinders up um, and, and join them together. The the outer diameter of the piece is 63 millimeters, so um, you know, this accepts radius. I did 31 and a half. My height was seven millimeters, so there's the first layer. Okay. The second layer, I added another primitive, another cylinder. Uh, you'll see that 123 Design does a pretty good job of snapping pieces to the center if you are, um, you know, adding new pieces. I, I found that it's kind of tricky when it comes to moving pieces uh, that you've already built, trying to line them up. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do that. It's a lot easier in AutoCAD and, and, and those other you know, more professional type things, but this is free, so I'm not going to complain too much. Um, so here's radius. Uh, for the for the inner one, it's going to be 26 and a half. Okay, we had a 53 millimeter diameter. Uh, the height on this, I'm going to make it 14. It's 
Uh, and I'll tell you why, right? So this is too high. We don't need it that high. We only need seven. I made it 14 because I'm actually going to take this now and I'm going to move it. And I'm going to move it down along the Z axis. Okay. Move it down along the Z axis. Let's select that. Seven millimeters. And what that's going to do is going to line them up together. And then I'm going to join these two pieces together. Up here you see there's a uh, series of menus. The combined menu is the one that we want. And you'll see merge. Pick the target solid that we want and the source. And we hit enter and they become one single piece. Okay, the next thing I want to do is put the hole in the bottom for the bearing. So what you have to actually kind of do is build out the, um, what, the shape that you want the hole to look like. So I'm going to put another cylinder up here and I'm going to make it um, 12 is the radius because I want a 24 millimeter wide hole. The bearing is 22 mil. I want a little bit more space in there um, to hold the bearing and, and, and not, me and I have to hammer it in place. Okay. So for the height, um, I only need an 8 millimeter deep hole, but I want it to be rounded at the top. So I'm going to add a little bit more onto it to make it round. I'm going to put a uh, 12 millimeters in there and round it off. I mean, I, I could go in here and make it 10 and do a 2 millimeter curve or whatever, but um, just for uh, you know, the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and make it 12. So here we are. Now remember, this is actually going to be the, the area that's cut out from the inside of this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and round the top off. Up here in the menu again, there's a selection for modify and fill it to create rounded edges. Okay, so I want to select the edge here and then I'm going to put in a 4 millimeter radius. What that's going to do is going to give me an 8 millimeter high cylinder and then this curve up the remaining four millimeters. Okay. So like I did with the other pieces, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it down the Z axis, 14 millimeters. Okay, and that's going to bring it all the way down to the bottom. You can see here. Now I want to subtract this area, this volume that I created from the overall solid. Okay. So I'm going to come back up here to the menus and the combined menu we merged earlier. Now we're going to subtract. So the target solid that I want is this, and the source is the source of the cut, which is basically this. Hit enter, and there it goes. It's gone. Next thing I need to do is drill hole down the center. So again, I'm going to use a primitive cylinder, snap it to the middle. The radius, I'm going to have an 8 mil threaded rod going down the middle. Okay, So that would be a 4 millimeter radius, but I actually wanted a hair bigger. So I'll do 4.1. That'll give me an 8.2 millimeter wide hole. I left the height at 20 millimeters because it really doesn't matter. Imagine this is a drill bit, if you will. Uh, I'm going to move it again down the z-axis. Now I don't need to type a number in. I can just grab it and drill it on down in because it doesn't really matter as long as I cut through the surface. It doesn't matter where it is. Okay, so I'm going to come back up here now to the combined menu. Hit subtract. My target solid again is my the piece that I'm building. The source for the cut is going to be that cylinder. Hit enter and it's gone. So there we go. I've got two pieces that are identical. Obviously, I could have just copied and pasted, but I want you guys to see how I, I went about um, creating the part. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and export this into Slicer and uh, check out the piece, put it on the printer, and we'll see how that goes. Thanks. Okay, so the print's complete. It took about two hours. Um, it was kind of uh, a chore because the since these spool holders weren't made yet, I had to manually keep an eye on the filament and rotate the spool by hand so that the filament would feed freely. So every few minutes I had to come in and, and loosen up some filament. But anyways, I'll go ahead and pop this off the plate and um, I'll cut to uh, see how it all fits together. All right, so I popped the pieces off the plate. They came off relatively easily. I had to uh, use a razor knife to kind of get under it a little bit, but uh, they came off really well. So what I've got here is the original axle that I used, and these are the 
brackets that I had used to hold the old filament spool. Um, and here is the new piece. This is the support material that was generated automatically by Slicer inside here and it just came right out. I had no issues with that at all. Um, the threaded rod fits nicely in here. It's a pretty snug fit. I might ream that out with a file a little bit. But, um, but yeah, it worked out. I probably could have gone another millimeter uh, just to make life a little bit easier. Um, but you'll see here the bearing fits nicely inside. And where I had the problem before, I found that this piece that I made is a perfect fit. It fits snugly, there's no wobble, and with the bearing in there and the rod going through it, um, it should turn freely. And we'll go ahead and put it together and give it a try. Okay, so it really only took about five seconds with a needle file. Um, had no problem at all getting the threaded rod through. But here's the, the final assembly, and I tighten these nuts down up against the, the bearings that are inside. Uh, there's, it's really sturdy. It actually works out better than the old ones did on the other spool. But you can see I've got a nice smooth rotation. So that's it. I'll go ahead and wind the filament back up around the spool and mount it to the top of the printer. And we'll be all done. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. It's uh, shows how versatile 3D printers really can be and, and how easy it is to you know, recognize you, know, you, you need something and you whip up a prototype, a 3D model, and uh, make it real. Thanks.